Hey folks, it's Mr. Fly here, hope you're well. Now, I'm out and about on the little Honda CRF again and uh, pleased to say I'm doing a bit of off-road work because I've found this amazing trail. I'm up in uh, the Trossachs, Loch Lomond and the Trossachs National Park and uh, just north of Aberfoyle, three or four miles, is this brilliant uh, trail. It's called the Three Locks Forest Drive and uh, it's part of the Queen Elizabeth Park and it was opened in uh, 1977 as part of the Queen's Silver Jubilee and as the title suggests it's a scenic drive that takes you past three different locks one of which can't pronounce one is called Loch Achiel I think and the other is uh, Loch Drunky so uh, and not only are there are three locks but there's some beautiful scenery as well to be had and uh, it's all on trails like this properly marked uh, not tarmacked but not uh, hideously loose muddy stuff either it's stuff that you know the CRF is ideally suited for and as an added bonus look at that scenery now it's uh, it's a one-way drive as well so theoretically I'm not gonna meet any cars coming the other way although I might meet the odd uh, cyclists of course so stick around stay tuned and let's see what the three locks forest drive has to offer well the first thing it has to offer are these absolutely splendid views I mean, it's one of those places that you don't want to go ripping around because you just miss these, this amazing scenery. It's hard to believe that I'm only about 30 miles away from the centre of Glasgow. So I'm hardly in the uh, northern wilds of Scotland. This part of Scotland, in fact, is uh, the bit where the lowlands meets the highlands. So I guess, uh, although I don't regard this as being in the highlands proper, the Trossachs kind of marks the boundary. And it is an absolutely stunning part of the world. If you're into camping, which I'm not, then this would be an absolutely amazing place to come and stay because uh, in Scotland the laws let you camp pretty much wherever you like as long as you don't leave any mess behind. In this particular area, the camping is managed, which I think means you just have to buy a permit, which is something like three quid, and then you can camp wherever you like. And uh, I can imagine with outdoorsy types, camping somewhere like this would just be amazing. Particularly on a beautiful day like today, the weather's unusually lovely for Scotland. It's the first time I've been to Scotland for a while and it's not been tipping it down with rain and the forecast is set fair all day okay it's not particularly hot but it is a beautiful day as you can see and ideal for this sort of sightseeing and what a fantastic facility this is exactly the sort of riding I had in mind when I thought about buying the little CRF you wouldn't bring your Panigale down here you might bring your GS down here but you wouldn't bring your street triple or your street bike because it is you know, a bit rough on the old tyres, but on a bike like this, a dual sport bike with knobbly tyres, I've got plenty of grip, you can handle these potholes, and it's just brilliant fun. Now this ride itself, as I said, is part of the uh, Queen Elizabeth Parks, and uh, as such it's managed by the Scottish Forestry Commission. I suspect before they made this into a tourist trail, these were probably just forest logging roads and they've managed to join them together in a bit of a scenic loop, I'm assuming anyway. And if that is the case, it means that at least some of these logging roads are available to us. So I'm just going to come up to this little parking spot here because I think there's a little view of one of the locks just up here. Let's have a look. Where can I go? Wowie. look at that looks like somebody might have already been camping here actually what an amazing spot to come camping eh? let's just kill the bike and listen to that noise absolute silence wow tell you what let's get me other camera out for a view of this just check this out this is why I love Scotland just check out this view Well, there we have it, look at that. Just have a little sharp for a second and just listen. Just the sound of the birds and a waterfall. Absolutely stunning. And this uh, loch we're looking at here, I think it's Loch Drunky. And uh, the reason why it's called that, at least uh, so I was told on a recent boat trip, is that um, years ago in, uh, well, in the 1400s, I think it was, around the time of Rob Roy, um, 
these whole areas contain lots of um, whiskey distilleries and these things were actually illicit and the local duke I think it was the duke of Montrose that was it, it took a while to remember there the duke of Montrose decided that all these stills should be uh, should be cleaned out and taken from the scenery or taken from the uh, the surrounding areas because they were illicit uh, so what they did they cleared all the stills and then they were all dumped in this lock uh, and that's how this name got the this lock got the name lock drunky because it was said that if you actually imbibed the water from the lock you could actually get quite inebriated because of the some 200 discarded whiskey stills that are in there now i've no idea of course if that's true but it makes for a great story Wow, what an amazing spot. I love the places that the little CRF will take you. Absolutely brilliant. Right, let's crack on then with the uh, Three Locks Forest Drive. Now one of my favourite YouTube channels, I don't know if you've seen it, is a channel called the Everide Channel. And it's... Uh, a beautiful channel. I say beautiful because its creator, Tyler, does some brilliant work with um, his cinematography, if you like. It's really nicely filmed. He rides his dual sport dirt bikes around the badlands of Utah and the US. And I'm always insanely jealous of the absolutely beautiful trails he gets to ride on. They're all over his backyard and he can ride every anywhere, it seems, and the weather's always beautiful. And he has all these red rocks and giant stacks and it looks absolutely amazing and I just as I say insanely jealous of what he gets to ride around but I have to say if Tyler's watching this at all and I know he's a subscriber of mine so number one hello Tyler he would probably love to ride these trails this is so completely different to that stuff in Utah hello just by virtue of the fact it's got water and greenery if nothing else Anyway, if you're interested in scenic rides on dirt bikes, do check out the Everride channel. You won't be disappointed with uh, the amazing work that Tyler puts in. Look at that. Eat your heart out, Everide. <laughs> the other thing that makes this particular trail unusual for me, not at least the fact that it's just absolutely stunning, but the fact that it's um, almost nine miles long which won't sound very long to the likes of uh, <laughs> Tyler and the Everide Channel fans but for somebody in the UK that's remarkable we normally only get to ride or at least in England we only get to ride on green lanes and you're lucky if you get one of those a mile long so this one actually being a decent ride is a real novelty and it's so good I might even do it twice super popular with walkers of course my folks. Hello. Can't help but note the attractive one at the end didn't wave at me, but never mind, I won't take it personally. Must be because I got the visor on. She couldn't see what she was dealing with. <laughs> well, amazing reflections here off the loch. Just wondering whether to stop for a wee dram. Or perhaps I won't. These uh, Michelin T67 tyres I fitted to the CRF are just paying dividends now. On this sort of surface, they're just absolutely fantastic. Loads of confidence-inspiring grip, and I hope by saying that I don't now come a cropper something terrible. <laughs> but they do grip really nicely on this stuff, and there's some pretty loose potholy stuff here, as you can see. avail myself of those facilities. What's that I can hear? Oh, that there, I don't know if you can see it, is a seaplane. It probably looks a long way away on the GoPro. But that's the seaplane that lands on Loch Lomond, which is just uh, only about 10 miles away. And it's one of only two lakes in Europe, I think, that has seaplanes flying off it. This one and Lake Como. I've never flown off of Loch Lomond, unfortunately, but I have done Lake Como. Anyway, that's another story. Anyway, I'm fully refreshed now, having used these excellent facilities. Gives me a chance to check the map here. This is the drive. And the three locks are Loch Drunky, which we saw earlier. Loch Venneke and uh, Loch Achre. Loch Venneke 
uh, is one where we're next to now pretty much unfortunately you can't really see it from the from the road I don't think I think you have to do a little walk or go on a bicycle to see it but anyway we'll see in a minute all right back onto the bike right just keeping a little bit of an eye on the fuel as in the Highlands of Scotland actually fuel stations are few and far between here and the CRF has a rubbish range on its standard tank so we're just keeping half an eye on that certainly don't end up being stranded here with no fuel well what an absolutely splendid way to spend your Thursday lunchtime this is what life's all about isn't it what else would you rather be doing than something like this I ask myself and other than flying in that seaplane we just saw overhead I can't think of anything well, and one other more obvious thing, but let's not go there. You've got to be careful not get too carried away, because there are some uh, fairly hefty potholes here. And if you did come a cropper, you don't see people that often on these trails. And as a general rule, I don't like to do anything too tricky. I'm not saying this is tricky at all. But I don't do anything too tricky on the bike purposely, because uh, I do tend to ride on my own. And if you came off, you could do yourself a nasty damage and you don't want to be away from help in those situations all right where are we going around here oh traffic coming the other way good stuff hello hi friendly types these cyclists Right, that peak we can see ahead there, just see that cone-shaped peak, that's Ben Ann, which uh, I climbed a few days ago with my family, fantastic views from up the top there, it's only some 1500 feet tall so it doesn't count as anything significant like a Munro which has to be over 3000 feet, or a Corbett, or I think the other one's a, a Jeffrey or something, can't quite remember. But anyway, it's nothing significant in the scheme of mountainous things, but it certainly is a nice view when you get to the top. I've caught up with a van! How good is that? Nowhere is safe from the white van. Okay, it's silver, but it still counts. Very much. Thank you. Wow, well, just look at this place. What a fabulous facility this is. And a real treat to find when you've uh, taken the trouble to bring the bike up here. some glorious smells around here I don't know if it's the heather or what but you don't get air this fresh where I live Ooh, let's get a bit more gnarly now okay short lift I dare say this would be a bit more tricky if it was absolutely sodden wet Well, there's a little farm or something there. Imagine living out here. Unbelievable. The soil's very red here, I guess, indicating it's rich in iron. Okay, I'm just getting glimpses now of another loch up ahead. This will be the uh, head of Loch Achre, I think. Some more walkers. I don't want to annoy too much with my outrageous motorbike hooliganism. Oh, they're wavers, they're good. Oh, yes, I think I can feel another photograph moment coming. Check that out. Right, let me get a snap. OK, 
Okay, just a little stop for a couple of photographs. And this one is uh, Loch Acre, I believe. Not too bad a way to spend your Thursday lunchtime, eh? Better than work, anyway. Right, onwards. That is the only problem with these scenic rides. Is they're just too darn scenic and you have to keep stopping to take pictures. Right, here we go. Fabulous view of Ben Arn now, Ben Ann. Could not enjoy the scenery too much, but concentrate on where my front wheel's going. Well, I think this has to count as one of the nicest rides I've ever done on the CRF. Absolutely stupendous in every way. Fabulous trail, beautiful scenery, bike completely at home, nice weather. Absolutely brilliant. I'm now hoping I didn't speak too soon about the nice weather. That uh, cloud up ahead looks a little bit ominous. What a fabulous little ride that was, really enjoyed that. So I'm almost at the end of the uh, Three Locks Forest Drive now. A forest ride in my case. Hope you enjoyed that and I hope you enjoyed the, uh, the other little rides that I've done last few days around the Trossachs. It's great to get out on the bike and just explore the local area while I was up here. If you've got one of these bikes, it's well worth getting yourself one of those little trailers so you can take it, the bike around with you. Where am I going? This way. Because you can explore these places you couldn't otherwise do so. Anyway, hope that's been of uh, some interest to you. I look forward to speaking to you next time. Until then, this has been the Mist and Fly. Cheerio.